In this video trailer, we're going to look at what is slippage in forex trading. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Okay, so what is slippage in forex trading? We've heard it. You might have heard it. You're wondering what is it all about. So, if let's just put a scenario up here. You've got USD JPY, and it could be anything. It could be Euro USD, could be cable, could be any currency pair, major, minor, or other. Right. So you have a price of 110.56 to 110.57. That's the quote given to you by your broker. The market's chugging away and it's sitting there at 110.56 and it's pushing an uptrend. You bring up a ticket and you think, hey, you know what? This is a good long. I'm looking for a buy. I'm looking for it to go up and hit 111. That's my target. A little scalp trade, a little 44 pip snatch of, well, 43 pips if you're buying at the offer, a little 43 pip snatch trade, I'll be happy, that's my thesis. So you go along, you crack open your ticket, you whatever platform you're trading with at the moment. By the way, if you haven't got a trading platform, check out one in our link below for a decent trading platform that doesn't trade against you. But going back to the point, if you have your trading ticket there, you bring it up, says sell, says buy, these are all gonna be very different depending on who you're trading with. You will put in your order size here and say you're doing 10 CFDs or 10 pound a point, whatever it may be, and you decide to buy at that price level. So you hit the button and you think you're gonna be filled 10 CFDs at 110.57 or 10 pound a point at 110.57. What happens is you come back and you get a report that says, okay, you're now long. Great, that's good, Yong, USD, JPY, 10 pound a point at 110.59. What? You say, hang on a second, it was 110.57 when I hit that button. Why is it 110.59? Well, this is what's called slippage. You've used here a market order or some brokers will allow you to set come some kind of slippage but generally speaking if you're trading directly in the exchange you're trading uh in the interbank or you're trading the futures market or you're trading a stock i'm not talking about forex at the moment but if you set a market order that basically means i want to get filled my size at any price possible so your 10 pound a point here goes out and by the time it hits the market in the short window of time it takes for your order to hit that to process it to go through to the broker at the broker to look at it, check it, fill it, bring it back to you. You have got two pips of slippage. So what does it mean? It basically means that now that your entry price is 110.59, not 110.57. How could you have avoided that? You could have avoided that by using a limit instead of a market. You could have used a limit, or in some brokers, they're allowed to like set a parameter that has a certain amount of slippage, but not others. So you can adjust that to suit, but let's just keep it as the real world, if you like, based order types. Uh, you could use a limit. You could have said, okay, I want a limit of 57. And then if you'd hit it and it gone to 59, your order would still be resting, pending, not filled. You wouldn't have been filled because the price has moved to 59. It's basically done this. It's moved to 59 a little bit, not quite as much, but you get the idea. And you haven't been filled. So is this a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, you could say it's a bad thing because you wanted to buy at 57, it's now at 59. If you're at 10 pound a point, you've just lost 20 pounds. You could be 20 pound up on the deal straight away within a second. But you could look at it and say, well, actually, you know what? There's a lot of momentum here. I just wanted to get in the trade. I wanted to get in on this deal. It started to run off without me. Um, I'm just happy to pay 59 as I was to pay 57. And I'm happy to go with it. You kind of have to assess based on the conditions you're in and based on the trade that you're doing. Now, one caveat and warning is this. If the market is going wild like this and you're lobbing around market orders, be prepared for that number to be horrendously different from that number, depending on who your broker is, depending on the speed of your connection, depending on all that kind of stuff. You may think you're buying at 57 and Believe me, experience this, hold my hand up, made the mistakes. You might end up getting filled at something like 87 because this thing is just going crazy. You're getting involved when you shouldn't be. And inevitably, that 87 is going to be there. And then it's, it comes down and the price is way, way lower than you expected because it's just literally getting pinged at the highs. You'll get filled at the highs, you'll get filled at the lows, you're one way around. So if it's something that's going to affect you and the conditions are 
are intensive and aggressive, it's a fast market, use a limit order. That will avoid any type of slippage at all. If you just want to get into the position, you're prepared to accept some slippage, then by all means use a market order. And by the way, we could flip it on its head as well. If we're selling, we sell at 56, slippage would mean we get filled at something like 54. That'd be two pip slippage, 55 would be one pip slippage and so on, you get the idea. So that slippage in Forex trading is going to depend on the, the, the uh, volatility of the instrument you're trading, the liquidity of the instrument you're trading. If you're trading a minor, uh, you may get slippage as well. If you're trading big size as well, I mean, unlikely with large Forex pairs, but some of the minor ones you possibly could if you're trading uh, quite large size. And, and it's going to depend on the conditions of the market at the time as well. So, and the broker obviously, and the speed of your connection also, because even if the market doesn't move much, if it takes too long for that to go to the broker, so the broker's sitting here with his computer uh, here in, let's say in London, and you're trading here from um, oh, I don't know, Dublin, say, um, I'm just making stuff up here, uh, and it has to go to London to get filled for whatever reason, then, and you've got a slow computer as well, by the time you've got that a slow internet connection, by the time that 57 or that 10 market order gets to there, the market may well have legitimately just moved two pips. And because the broker has received a market order, they're gonna say, well, he just wants a market order, he wants a fill. And then he'll come back and say 59, and you might always be getting slippage. It might work in your favor though as well, if you've got a market order and you've got an honest broker, which is why it's important to have your honest broker, check out below. The you may well get positive slippage. So you might well get an order back that says, okay, I went to buy at 57. Oh great, I got filled at 55, so I got two pips less than I expected. Now again, without repeating myself here, that could be positive or negative depending on how you're viewing it. But that would be slippage that works in your favor, so to speak. In other words, you're getting a slightly cheaper price than you expected. Save yourself a couple of pips, 10 pound a point, save yourself 20 quid. Great, you think that's fantastic. Not fantastic if it pummels through the floor, but fantastic if it then rips off the upside. So it's kind of relevant, but really focus solely on managing your risk. Don't get caught out in this kind of silly stuff and focus on making good trades. And the best trades really might not be using market orders under aggressive conditions. You'll be using limit orders. And if you do use a market order and you get slipped from time to time, it shouldn't have too much of an impact on you, especially if you're going for you know larger targets. Obviously, if you're scalping for 10 pips, you're getting two pips slippage each time. All of a sudden, it becomes a negative expectancy game. So anyway, guys, that's slippage in Forex trading. See you next one. Take care. Good trading.